Welcome to Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. Hello and welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. I have officially relocated to Mount Shasta. <laughs> and I can confirm that all of the rumors are true. I'm actually at about 5,000 feet right now on Mount Shasta. And uh, I, I drove cross country to get here. And as I got within 15 or so miles of Shasta, I literally had to take an exit, get out of the car and ground myself because the energy was so intense. And okay, what do I mean by that? My my whole body started vibrating, like tingling, and I got lightheaded. That is, my whole body was lighting up. And the first glimpse of Shasta as you approach is very impressive. There's taller and taller mountains as you get closer and closer to, to Shasta. And then there's one curve that you go around that gives you that first peak at Shasta's peaks. <laughs> and it does take your breath away and with just how massive it is and how magnificent and commanding it is and yet it hits you right in the heart center it really does and and I don't know if this has always been the case but I sense that Shasta is opening expanding with the shift this year and specifically this spring now I'm clairaudient and uh, claircognizant and the mountain kind of sounds like command central to me Yes, there are masters and ETs chattering away up here, but the mountain itself, in its role as a portal or a vortex, is definitely an active hotspot on the grid right now. Uh, since I've been here, I've had several moments each day when energies will kind of spin up or down right through me on different spots around town or on the mountain itself, and being present and in the flow are kind of key to maintaining balance with the energy and integration has to be attended to or you can really get yourself kind of out of sync up here it's interesting to watch the energy working different patterns or or visitors teachers healers and even the locals it really demonstrates how individual the shift can be and also how collective our human ascension process continues to be Individual awareness, even in a place like Mount Shasta, continues to make choices that are not resonating with these new frequencies. But this is evolution, so be it. So if someone is making choices about how they're reacting to uh, the, the energies or making judgments about it or not aware of it at all, it's all it's all a matter of resonance and a matter of matching or not matching the vibration and when you feel it coming in what you're going to do with it but like i said as this is all about evolution so so it is now mount shasta itself is a tiny town <laughs> a tiny tiny doing a remarkably good job of creating and supporting environmentally spiritually and conscious businesses of all types. Organic gardens, earth aware policies are abundant, alternative health and energy sources are available, although not everyone is using them, largely due to a, a really awful economic situation up here. Now this area's unemployment rate paired with California's ridiculous cost of living that's you know housing taxes fees gas and electric costs the price of services in the middle of in the middle of a, a nowhere town sorry about the traffic noise i am actually on the mountain um all of these factors tend to prevent investments in independent energy sources or general home improvements apparently um but when you're a globally recognized vortex, you attract seekers from all over who have abandoned the material and financial structures altogether. So there are many folks living in the forests here or wandering around the area, sunburnt, hungry, homeless, and living day to day on the energy of spirit. And for some people that I've encountered, a real kind of alternate reality that they've created that appears... Um, 
uh, it kind of appears like madness. They, they seem a little crazy. And they're kind of just lost in the belief that surrendering everything is the way to truth. And while I agree that surrender and eliminating unneeded possessions and simplicity is a very good idea for this transition, we still live on a planet where every inch of land is owned by somebody. And we still have to pay to live on this planet, which is, you know, odd when you take one step off of the planet <laughs> and you go, hmm, that's interesting. Um, now, I don't find the idea of trying not to get caught in, in on somebody's property or living in the shrubs on the mountain to be a very empowering position. Well, not as a long-term lifestyle, at least, uh, for an experiment or, hey, let's go camp out for a couple of days. That's fine. <clears throat> but um, not as like a long-term goal. <laughs> and I'm not sure how that level of poverty benefits brother humanity. Collectively, okay, it's good to have some people just kind of really being uh, in the moment, but when in the moment turns into kind of desperately seeking for the next warm place to be or uh, on the graces of others' generosity with a spiritual, positive, expanding path, then yeah, okay. But please consider the state of the collective consciousness before throwing yourself into the mercy of the wilderness. Just a tip. You know, find others and, and create community that bridges the gap between the corporate commercial enslavement and reliance on the elemental animal and plant kingdoms to provide harmony and support because sometimes um, they do not. They're going through their own shifts and um, uh, we're, we're not in Eden just yet. Yes, you can carry that vibration around and in general the kingdoms will harmonize with you, but we still have a lot of very harsh changes um, coming up, and especially in a vortex like Shasta. I mean, it feels, when I first, um, <laughs> when I first came here last Thursday, I was walking around and I'm like, what the heck's going on here? <laughs> because it, the, the energy, and it was, it was just so amplified, and not only that, but thousands of people are pouring in to this town that only has a population of about 4,000 to begin with. And uh, everyone has these expectations and anticipation and excitement about the eclipse and all the different workshops that were going on this weekend. And the mountain is chattering away. It sounds like Command Central. And you've got all these beings, you know, around and, and chattering away. And <laughs> it was just like, whoa, what's going on? Okay, it was just a little overwhelming at first. All right, now back to the town. There are many very good gifted healers here and some very knowledgeable shop owners as well um, selling everything from crystals native instruments books art clothing oils herbs anything related to metaphysical or the spiritual path the the tourist season is summertime and the general perspective around here is that most visitors leave by end of august with the ski season community coming later in the winter uh, but they tend to stick to the mountain and the hotels. However, it's 2012, and there's a notable increase in visitors, and that seems to be on every shop owner's mind, and every conversation that I've had here includes a mention of the crowds coming to visit Shasta this year. So that, that makes it um, that makes it fun. It's, it's exciting. Um, it's it's going to be interesting to see what, what happens after the summer. But right here, right now, the, the teachers and the healers and even the shop owners here are as diverse as the outside world is. You'll, you'll find both authentic folks and charlatans here. Uh, vibration is vibration and there's something to match everyone's frequency here. So hopefully the shift will bump a few of the lower integrity folks off the map. But as we all know, we must create that in our own lives in order to create that on the planet. So everybody, do your best to be honest and authentic and honor humanity so that the world will reflect that as soon as possible. Now the amplifications leading up to the eclipse. Mm. The expansion, I thought, might be relieved a little after the eclipse, but they have not stopped here. There's a definite stepping up with uh, 
and it seems to be consistent, but there's a few short hours every once in a while to integrate here. And I'm learning to take advantage of the, the downtime or rather the less intense time to integrate. Because prior to the eclipse last Sunday, the anticipation and excitement of so many in town and the planet and everyone around the planet just amplifying the intentions of the eclipse and the reconnection of humanity to these ancestral roots, you know, this 26,000 year event um, and, and this repatterning of uh, a, a, re, a recoding, rewriting. A lot of folks have been calling it the reboot of, um, of humanity is, uh, is, is really, was really palpable, palpable before the eclipse and, and now afterward. Definitely, um, since Sunday, things have been going down and it's, it's interesting because thousands of people made themselves conduits during the eclipse to anchor these new codes into humanity and the planet with an added push to eliminate the dark agendas and all the, the manipulations from humanity. Now, truthful, uh, truthfully, Gaia, Mother Earth, is absolutely fine in her ascension process. Absolutely. It is inevitable. It's already occurred. Her higher expression is absolutely wondrous. And it's beautiful that so many of us are just anchoring these frequencies into the, this this dimensional body and her higher dimensional expression to speed things up and that's that's what we're that's what we're attempting to do with this whole shift in consciousness yes it's inevitable but how long and how troublesome it's going to be is still up to us as individual and as a collective awakened ones uh, we do have a bit of a responsibility to make sure that this uh that we don't end up in this battle of consciousness for decades instead of let's let's take care of it you know let's just make the jump and when these amplifications come around and thousands of people around the globe are anchoring this stuff in many different expressions it was really interesting to see up here in Shasta how how many different expressions of of honoring the higher realms there are some people totally focused on ascended masters and and a, a lot of um people focused on saint germain and archangel michael and metatron huge here i mean and their their presence is definite now i i sense a change in the masters themselves just in the last few months i've i've resonated with this um this kind of I, I call it light intelligence and I don't like using the word download because it sounds it's just way too trendy for me and I know I mentioned that in my in my blog this week but um, this this light intel that's that's coming in is cons consistently says that yes there's changes in humanity and the planet and everything but this is a galactic change that's going on. And as the Ascended Masters let go of their stories, just as we're letting go of, of ours, um, they too are morphing and changing into a higher expression. So we want to make sure that we're not clinging to the way things used to be or <clears throat> kind of taking an ancient structure and expecting it to be exactly the same uh, all the way through the shift. Um, let's just leave ourselves open and to the new stuff and not um, cling to, well, I did that last year, so this year I'm going to do the same thing or whatever. And it's it's very cool to see people doing intuitive, um, in the now moment, anchoring and, uh, and kind of, uh, not amplifying, but um, accelerating the shift with these kind of unique expressions and not being tied to a, a schedule or a ceremony or this is the way they used to do it so we're going to do it the same way or have to use a specific geometry etc it's really there's really a lot of different expressions now some people do cling to ancient um 
ancient stuff, medicine wheels and geometries and and channels and and things like that. Um, but there are people who are really morphing and blending a lot of these different uh, technologies and adding their own flavor to it, and it's really beautiful because they they go with the flow. A lot of these different groups, and and they're they're all very small. This is, I mean, it's a again, it's a really tiny town. So even if you have uh, visitors coming in, you know, you work with them and you, you see what they have to provide and. And I'm, I really appreciate the folks who have made that step into the new paradigm where it is collective and it's an honoring of all the different skills that, that people have, their different expressions, their different messages, their different intuitives, and kind of blending them together and, and welcoming that all. So, um, because there are no rules, <laughs> there's no right way and wrong way to do this. And uh, and and shame on the uh, the the old school teachers who are still um, saying you know you have to do this otherwise you want to send it's like wow really still doing that okay and uh, and that was kind of interesting to see this weekend and it was interesting to see the people the the people who like who followed whom and the different crowds you know the different workshops that were going on and events and seminars. And it was interesting to see the people who resonated with um, people who are like what I would call new age, which is to me is is kind of done. Um, you know, we're we're like paradigm now. We're new paradigm and beyond, beyond, beyond. I mean, there's some people who are here who are completely interdimensional galactic and it, it's awesome to talk to them and <laughs> I had this great conversation with this woman um last Thursday she was like one of the first light workers that I spoke to when I got here and half of our conversation was telepathic you know just kind of stop and giggle for a little while <laughs> it was it was really cool because we were like yes and yes and yeah and you know it was very um very cool but it's interesting to see who's drawn to that and, and who's drawn to kind of that new age, um, old school metaphysical uh, crowd. And, and to see that a lot of those people are, are ill. I mean, the followers, not the teachers, are, are having physical challenges, health challenges, looking, searching. You know, they're, they're really wanting something outside of themselves to to fix them to give them the answer instead of pursuing a um a, a more empowering uh stance but I, I mean that's that's everyone's path through this shift but uh for for me it was a little surprising to see that in shasta i was like hmm, really um but uh, mo you know most of those workshops and things are not people who actually um dwell here all the time and but they they do exist here all the time too so it's uh interesting to see though the 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 choices that people are making as we go through the shift when it comes to their own awakening and their own enlightenment and uh yeah yeah okay well that's just an observation okay so uh, everyone was here anchoring these these codes and everything and we have to understand that we are not, we are serving the planet and we are anchoring these things into her body just in order to speed things up. We do have to realize that the ascended earth already exists. You can go and visit there. This is why when you go and visit there, I, I personally, I never run into another human when I when I visit that new earth and and my new earth is fifth dimensional expression I'm not talking about the the fourth dimensional thing that we're going through right now that eventually gets into that fifth dimensional frequency now the gap of time this this linear time thing that's breaking down and how that's going to be experienced before we actually spin into that fifth dimensional resonance it's completely up to humanity now. It's not even up to the planet because her consciousness is already connected to that fifth dimensional expression. And now we have this collective humanity that needs to 
uh, kind of step up to the plate and command its own consciousness to raise its frequency to speed up this transition. And hopefully it won't take a lot of um, disastrous things to happen in order for that dimensional shift to um, to unfold. Uh, and and again, you know, we're we're anchoring all these things into the planet, but our intentions right now are to raise the vibration of not just the planet, but of the human consciousness. And that's something that, when we work on it individually, that's beautiful. But for a long time, we've been playing in this incarnation game, and we we have to realize that that's coming to a close as well. And all of these structures and alignments, I'll get into the eclipse alignment in a second. All of these alignments are, are creating new dimensional structures for us to live in and to transition into. So we, we have to realize that, that things are breaking apart pretty quickly, but, um, the, like I always say, the pop into another dimension is not going to happen on a collective level unless we seriously pick up the vibration on the planet. Because I'm sitting on a globally renowned uh, vortex right now. And even in the town uh, below, although people are smiling all the time and are generally uh, pleasant... Uh, you can see the effects of the frequency on, on, on a lot of people who are just having a hard time with it. And these are people who are awake. You know, these are people who are on their way to to a dimensional shift in a big, powerful leap. So let's, let's just be a, aware of our individual consciousness. So let me get into the incarnation thing. So for a very long time, we've been playing in the incarnation game. That's creator in incarnate form. And even though the karmic lattice work is gone, and we're we're still addicted to the game of playing incarnate form. Coming back with crystalline structures now right in in place in your physicality seems appealing, but as we're seeing as we're seeing right now, the crystal kids are having a good deal of challenges as well. Now, the eclipse continued a series of changes to our sun or Solaris, as the sun is is going to be known as Solaris, okay, or is known as, which is, and, and the sun is our stargate for everything in and out of our solar system. Again, this is why everyone explains with near-death experiences going into the light and everything. You're, you're, it's literally a portal, a stargate in and out of the solar system. So when you're coming in incarnate form you, the sun acts like a prism and it's fragmenting that that piece of yourself into uh, well 11 carnate expressions that uh, that all express at the same time so yes I'm I'm this one fragment of of the incarnate form of Sandra expressing on the radio right now but I also have all these other expressions happening at the same time. It's all parallel and timelines and, and playing out. That's why you get to jump timelines as, as much as you want as you go throughout your day. It's, it's basically giving you the most bang for your incarnation buck. <laughs> so you get all these different expressions happening at the same time, exploring all these different possibilities and choices. And then when you decide to leave, all those in, incarnate expressions um, get sucked back up, you go through the sun, you get the, the, the life review, you take a look at all the different choices. Well, did I make the, the best choice then? And, and then most of the time when you step out, uh, you want to step right back in again, it, despite how weird it feels right now, to, um, or challenging it feels to, to be here. Um, it's still, we're addicted to the game, pretty much. But the, the sun has been serving as that prism for a long time and now as we're as we're kind of moving out of this this addiction to to playing in that carnate form 
and eventually there won't be the same kind of expression won't, won't need to manifest any longer. We won't be in a carnate form, we'll be in a fifth dimensional form, which is much different and you don't get as much fragmentation. And as the Akashic levels start to get deleted and the soul level starts to get deleted and we start leaving that, that paradigm of this is how we're going to express in the lowest density that we can in order to learn blah 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 and all the lessons. As we ascend, the sun won't serve that, won't be um, supplying that prism any longer. And what it's going to do is it's going to end up, uh, it's still going to act as, as a stargate, of course, for, for not just monitoring everything that comes and goes out of the solar system, but it's taking on a new role too with um, changes in, in temperature and density and also a different geometric structure so that it's not going to be um, similar to how Earth is right now with like a north and a south pole, this, this polarity, this duality thing, with, um, with the, the same kind of magnetics. It's evolving into a, the, the sun itself is evolving into a four or, or more magnetic pole structure so that it can do more. So it's supporting something that's of a higher expression. Now we have to realize that the, the entire universe is getting an overhaul. Our, our galaxy is getting cleansed of all this old debris in order to support that. So, you know, as we trickle down from, and I had this, that conversation that I had with the, the gal last Thursday, we were talking and I'm like, I, I feel like the, the truth of source itself, like source itself wants to <laughs> express as something different. It, it was just like tr different truths, you know, for this universe are, are being created. And, uh, and, and she agreed. She's like, oh yeah, ev everything, 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 like beyond, beyond, beyond. So as we get trickled down and, you know, universe, galactic, into the solar system, the, the sun itself is changing to support a completely different plan. And as that trickles down then into the, the planetary structure, planetary structures changing, we all know about the different crystalline grids and all the different geometry coming in and the different codes, and then it affects your DNA because you need beings to express on a planet at a different level of consciousness. And so it's a return and a complete recoding of what our expression is. So everything is changing. Geometries are changing everywhere. Our chakra systems changing, the two toruses altering, the light bodies altering. Earth may end up with many magnetic poles to ascend. In order to ascend, her orbit's already changed a little bit. And that axis up, you know, when everyone talks about the Earth has to straighten up because the, the rods were messed with long ago in galactic battle, and that's why our, our planet is tipped and none of the other planets are tipped. It's just Earth has been this battleground for a long time. And even though people have said, well, the axis has to go straight up, that, that plan seems to have changed as well, whereas the, the, the North and South, po South Poles are, are shifting already. And, and I see like more, like uh, something completely different happening where there's different magnetic centers or poles in order to integrate something very new. And of course, because of all of these geometric and, and electromagnetic changes um, can really wreak havoc on, on the, the physical and, and mental and emotional and, and the nervous system, uh, all these different structures that we've been playing with for a long time are now all changing. So that's why we call it the ascension process. A sudden leap to a different frequency um, is, is, is tears apart the physical altogether. And we've all heard that, you know, the physical is supporting us through this transition. So some say, you know, 200 years before humanity has the, the proper body to support this level of frequency. I am hoping that the human consciousness does not uh, take a 200-year path. 
<laughs> toward a dimensional shift to like a fifth dimensional all is love, all is light uh, vibration. I'm really hoping that we can speed it up. Um, and we do have a lot of help, but it's going to be, it, there's still a lot of changes. I don't know if you've like been outside the house lately, but uh, we, we still have a lot of work to do. Okay, so uh, so the sun, as our portal to express here, is is changing, and this affects how our higher levels can express in this system on this planet. And as everything is breaking down and changing and ascending, this is uh, this is like the the ongoing program right now. So during the eclipse, the sun received a good jump in this process, and those geometries and codes immediately affected the inner workings of Gaia, both in the fourth dimension and the fifth dimensional expressions that we're working with here. Now a change in the sun affects the planet, which affects humanity, always, always, always affects us. And the, the cool bit about this eclipse was the alignment after 26,000 years or 25,900, whatever it was, with Alcyon, or Alcyone, however you want to pronounce it, the giant star of the Pleiades, also known as the central sun to a lot of us. Um, and that made it interesting for those of us with a Pleiadian DNA and, and star family, which is a large percentage of humanity, by the way, because Pleiadians have more genetic material on the planet than anybody else. And that's that's another story altogether. Oh, and by the way, Susan Carroll is actually um, channeling uh, Maitreya right now, the Maitreyas, uh, both um, female and male, um, That there's a merge there, uh, and talking about the history of the Pleiadians using Earth for their own ascension, and, um, and that's a lot of fun. So if you want to um, check out her blog, go to uh, multidimensions.com. <laughs> and I'll put that link on my, on my uh, Twitter too, because that's some, that's some fun material. And uh, if you don't re resonate with, with Susan, that's fine. Um, if you do, it's, uh, you know, it's always fun to read, you know, what different channels have to say about what has occurred on, on the planet. Um, and especially these, these past races, um, Wow, there's been so many. I mean, the, the Drax, the, the Syrians, the Pleiadians, all these different races have used this planet, Earth, for their own ascension process. And uh, it's, it's interesting because the, my, my Pleiadian um, material, lineage, whatever, is not strictly Pleiadian, of course. Um, hard to find pure expressions. Uh, on this planet right now, but as we um, as we kind of explore like where we've been, because we've been all over, and if you decided to incarnate <laughs> here during the shift in consciousness, there is uh, you you've probably got a long history in the galaxy, if not uh, the universe. For for me, I'm I've only gone as far as the galaxy. I don't know what I've done in other parts of the universe, but um, your expression of consciousness has been in a lot of different places. So it's always fun to kind of look at the more immediate things that have happened in history, like other other races using uh, this expression of Earth uh, for their own ascension. Um, so I always find that interesting. All right, sorry to get sidetracked. So so thousands of people were here, and and millions all over the planet, with this big expectation and excitement about the the annular eclipse happening over Mount Shasta. And I I was on on the mountain during the moment uh with my my solar viewing glasses <laughs> at hand and uh my you know my crystals put down in like a classic um 12 geometric structure me in the middle, had a, you know, all of my crystals were out, all of my, my stuff was together. I meditated for like three hours before it even began. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's wild up here. You have to remember that, you know, Shasta is a, it's a, a national forest. It's there, you know, there's nothing up here. There's, there's a road and, and 
some ski slopes on, on the other side, but it's, it's pretty raw. And it's also alpine. So you're, you know, you're sitting on this, this dust of, um, of, of broken down, uh, pine needles and, and the, uh, the dirt around here is very, um, dusty, you know, it's Northern California, it's kind of deserty. And, uh, so you've got, you know, pine needles and like all kinds of crazy critters and everything. And, but largely it's all pine trees and, you know, wicked wind. And it's just, it feels really wild to be up here. And of course, if you get to, I'm at about 5,000 feet here and the snow starts at about 6,500 feet and, uh, and, and, and up of course. And, and Shasta is about 14, five, 14,500, something like that feet. And, uh, so the whole top is, is snow and ice and it's, you know, it's, it's dangerous up there. I mean, you got to know what you're doing if you're going to go hiking and skiing and you got to know what, what happens with the wind and everything. So it's still pretty wild. So it was, it was exciting to be on this kind of wild mountain and, and meditating and waiting for this eclipse. It just felt really kind of raw and natural and, 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 uh, earthy kind of tribal, you know, and that, and that's the way I wanted it. I didn't want to sit in a workshop. I didn't want to be in, in any kind of schedule. So, so that was just my own thing. And of course there were hundreds and hundreds of people all over the mountain, you know, parked in their, in their own little spots or just pulling over to see the eclipse by the time the eclipse began. So this, the, the alignment started at about 5:30, and and you didn't get to the the ring of fire time until about 6 30 and that was really cool to see i i can't uh, i'm going to try to express it so the eclipse began you know and you're i'm meditating anchoring you know keep peeking through the solar goggles every once in a while and then by the time it got to ring of fire time it was intense it was just like this this big draw on the upper chest and the heart center. It just felt like a magnet to me of like all oh, this. It was just love and incredible amount of light and this, this force, this pull. When we got to full ring of fire, now everyone started cheering because it was really something to see. So you hear these echoes all over the mountain of everyone going, yeah, woo <laughs> Because it was really, it was really cool to, to see. So I'm standing, you know, barefoot on the mountain, looking up at this ring of fire. And as we got to the, the center, to me, it felt like, like I was looking through a telescope or like, almost like those, that telephone game that you play as a kid with the two cups and the string attached, like, hello, <laughs> it was like something opened and I felt like I had direct contact with home or our are part of home for me or friends, family, you know, it really felt strong and magnetic. Ooh, I don't, I, the, the codes were just working my heart center, something, something fierce. It was really cool. And I've, I've, I felt all of this, this connection and this communication, and I'm still trying to decipher a lot of those messages that came through, but I felt at I felt peace with the journey instead of this instead of this longing to go home longing to go home longing to go home that a lot of us has, have felt it shifted for me and when that opened it felt like a portal had opened and I understood what that that it was about the sun it was about the earth a little bit about me but I felt like I had a a big like telescope and I was just like looking straight into the the heart of of my star family and was able to um I was just I was giggling and like waving like literally waving and going hey guys I'm still here don't forget about me <laughs> and and then like I was like well I'm still, I'm still doing it. I'm still, I'll see you soon. I love you. <laughs> and it just, it felt like, like calling home. It was really, it was, it was very, it was very touching to me. And, uh, and the love and the connection and the, the whole like ring of fire thing 
seemed to go on and on and on. I mean, that felt longer than the 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 prequel and the sequel. I mean, it felt longer than than it, it felt like it lasted longer than it took the the moon to kind of move into that position. But um, it was beautiful. It was so beautiful. And for me, I was I was intuitively guided before the eclipse to kind of if you if you meet your thumb and your index finger and make a circle and then kind of spread the rest of your fingers out like like rays coming off of that and put it in front of your heart center that that's what I was guided as like a, a little mudra for for the for the afternoon and at the beginning of the ring of fire I saw these streams of light kind of like pouring out from the sun and not like rays of light it was like they were lifting and then pouring down and it looked very similar to the the pattern that was that was around my heart and my little mudra and and nobody else saw it of course so that's that's something that I either manifested or was a message just for me kind of like hey how you doing but literally like three strands on either side of the sun just kind of like curling off almost like spider legs you know just kind of draining off and then ring of fire began completely and they disappeared so that was that was fascinating and some folks said that they saw um different colors and, and things like that I was not looking with my bare eyes <laughs> I have enough trouble with my eyes I don't I don't didn't want to burn out my retinas looking at uh, an annular eclipse but for for those of us with Pleiadian, Pleiadian DNA and family um that connection may have been as as strong as the connection that I felt for you. Um, it was it was beautiful. It was really beautiful, and not only that, but it it took me out of that. I feel stuck here. I want to go home, longing to now. I feel like oh, right. I'm I'm responsible. I'm supposed to be. I, I'm the one who who's doing the work. Okay, thank you. I, I felt a um, like a, a nod from the Star family going, okay, we're going to be there to support you 24-7 now. Um, <laughs> keep up the good work, like a little thumbs up. And and got out of that, that uh, mindset of, I can't wait to go home, I can't wait to ascend, I can't wait to get out of here, to, oh, okay you know, let's step out of this whole like linear time suffering and go full into, okay, this is pure light server stuff now. This is all about service. This is all about responsibility. This is about, okay, I'm taking full command of my divine empowerment now and not just expressing as that, but I realize that uh, I got some work to do. So, and, and not on myself, but work with, with Brother Humanity. There's, there's so much more to do. And, it, but it was good to have like a little, it's almost like, um, like your coworkers or your, your entourage, uh, that you haven't seen in a long time. And you feel like you've been working alone and all of a sudden they show up and they're like, great job. We're going to be there. Don't worry about it. We're going to send you a lot of help and, and we'll be there soon. I promise. I promise. We see you. We see you. <laughs> You're doing great. We see you. We'll be there soon. And it was it was just really it, it, that's just what I felt. And and of course this overwhelming um feeling of codes coming in, this coding thing. Uh and and I know um uh Aluna and a, and a couple of other folks were calling it, you know, a reboot. And 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 I can I can see that because it was definitely um not just an activation of of DNA, long dormant DNA. I mean, we have so many strands of, of DNA in our body, and we, we're trying to activate like the highest quality DNA within us all the time. But it um, it it really felt like new divine encodements. And of course. As we move through the shift, we're, we're just getting more and more of those. But uh, this one felt like a preparation for the Venus transit, which is that return of the divine feminine. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that in a second. 
So this direct portal to home energy came in, this lifting of the heart, which felt very much like what I described um, was occurring with me just prior to the 1111. That like you like there's just this magnet pulling on the heart center. This this really palpable feeling of okay here's you know we're we're pulling you toward home. It was um, very very strong, and and uh, but the eclipse itself was really something to see. And hearing cheers across the mountain and the excitement and everyone talking about it afterward was really uh, was really a lot of fun for me really a lot of fun. So I just want to remind everybody that there, these alignments and these occurrences are definitely a time to celebrate and anchor the light and try and accelerate this shift as much as possible. But it's also very much a return to our divine nature that occurs with these alignments. And I, I understand, and, and when I feel into the collective, I, I, I see a lot of people, feel a lot of people, hear a lot of people um, expecting, like, full-on ascension any day now. Like, th- this is it. The eclipse, you're going to ascend. The Venus transit, you're going to ascend. The solstice, you're going to ascend. The equinox, you're going to ascend. It's, <clears throat> it's, I, r- I really see it as a process, and it's it's going to be individual so let's we we want to make sure that we're in a state of of neutrality about how our own ascension process is going down because again a pop into the fifth dimension i i do believe um that there is some truth to that for a lot of uh people who have really done the work, who are really in that vibration. I don't know when that window will open. I have a feeling it's going to be later on this year. It doesn't mean everybody. And it is a process. And there is there is, is so much involved in getting your expression to resonate and vibrate at a high enough level that you're ready to make that step. I just, um, that always, wow, it kind of makes me sad when people get very disheartened after a big event because um, people have been telling them, you know, this, this is it, this is it, and how important it is. It's always important. All of these alignments are important. They're important because we're bringing in and anchoring something new, not just within us, but in the collective, and that intention to anchor it right into the planet and okay let's go yes and embrace it and embrace it and embrace it and allow it to change you rather than put you in a state of frustration like I you know I didn't feel enough or I kind of felt something or I was cranky all day or whatever Uh, you know take away the judgment and look at the larger picture please try to look at not just the global perspective but the kind of galactic thing that's going on right now and I know I'm you know if you don't enjoy the galactic perspective probably listening to the wrong person but if when you look at the ascension process it's we're we're in a very heightened point right now but humanity on a whole is still pretty disempowered and most of us are pretty disempowered I mean, myself included, just looking for an apartment up here and having to let go of a lot of a lot of different things and and all the the fear about, you know, making it, not making it. You know, what what am I doing here? How come it's not clear? How come, you know, my my guys are telling me one thing and I show up and I'm like, okay, where where what's going on? You know, and the energy is completely different than what I thought it would be which is exciting and I'm trying to be excited about that but I still have like this you know basic physical survival thing going on that I'm I am ready to completely let go of um but we we all have like these little individual things happening and all of our journeys are built in a very different way so let's not expect that if if 
something doesn't happen to change absolutely everything on the planet all at once, that that doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't mean that uh, nothing's happening. And I really, I, I, with these events, we have to realize that these are, are huge surges of information, but we can't be just focused on pinpoints. It's the time in between, too, especially, it's just a roller coaster from here on in of one thing after the other, and you're going, you know, up and challenging climbing up the hill and then rushing down and it's fun and then okay I'll do it again okay I'll do it again but we have these these integration periods are becoming shorter and shorter so let's make sure that we don't go back to like an integration from 2011 period of time because it's just not going to be it's not going to be there you're not going to have weeks and weeks it's just it has to speed up it has to speed up and that's something that I'm, I'm trying to teach with my sessions right now is, you know, you know how to do this. Everyone has those intuitive skills. Let's get you into that space where you're like, yes, okay, I get it. I listened. I don't have to search anymore. I don't have to spend hours and hours looking for who's got the answer or whatever. All my answers are within. Here's how we do it. Bang. Okay, I got it. And it is a process and it is speeding up. And this, this ring of fire was, brought an incredible amount of joy. I mean, it was there were not just the cheers across the mountain, but the, the joy, that rebirth, that new dawn, the Pleiadian new dawn, that sun that's birthing within us. Boy, oh boy, did I feel it. And, and a lot of us did. That birthing of that new sun, the new dawn has risen. This is it, man. This is resurrection right here in your heart center. This is us coming back to life. But if we're going to deny it, or we're going to think it's not good enough, or we're not worthy enough, or I have to do this, I have to do that, it's it's going to take a long time for your central sun to rise, honey. <laughs> You're just going to have to say yes, yes, yes from here on in. And okay, so it's challenging. What hasn't been what hasn't been challenging in this process, honestly? So so let's just kind of just keep taking the baton and running. Keep going, keep going. And let that new dawn blaze through everything that used to be you. This is the rewriting of all those stories, dissolvement of everything that used to be. Let it go, let it go, let it go. If you don't know how to release and you don't know how to do emotional clearing, get on the floor phone with me it is not it's not that hard and and with practice it's instantaneous trust me it's it's good and the um and the children of the sun organization uh which is thousands of light workers all connected in in a group monad um decided to make a commitment to being um to kind of surrendering to that that monadic engagement where you dissolve into that group monad at will yes you need to step out of it because we're still experiencing a reality where you have to you know write write checks and and find a landlord every once in a while but the that monadic absorption was uh was something that you could commit to and it's something you can tap into now it's not like it oh you missed the eclipse you missed it go ahead and do it L listen to the mp3 on the site do do the exercise feel it if you want to do it it's a matter of surrendering to that and i really felt that with that ring of fire moment that i had with the pleiadian connection of like that group absorption like yes it's not individual anymore yes i feel the larger purpose yes okay i still have work to do and i'm fine with it it's fine <laughs> go ahead i'm ready it was like a complete recharge of my batteries it was great and the the children of the sun also added the intent to purge the planet of all this darkness again the planet is fine humanity <laughs> needs the purge you know we're it's we as i mentioned in previous uh broadcasts you have to eliminate and let go the whole payback scenario and this who's going to get it next. This is collective. Humanity, humanity, humanity. 
you know, the, the influence of, of races, yeah, it's still going on. Is it any of your business, really? Does it have anything to do with your journey? Unless you are specifically assigned to busting up uh, reptilian structures, it has nothing to do with you. Nothing anymore. Nothing to do with you. That story is gone. Past tense, being taken care of. Now it's humanity. Yes, humanity has been manipulated and hijacked by those beings. But as those beings leave the planet and all those relationships break down, there's nothing left but us. So this is where we are absolutely in charge. Of, of taking your power back. You know, it's one thing after the other. And if you think you can't do anything, if you think you, you there's nothing that you can do, get, get on the phone with me or send me an email and I'll send you 10 things, if you can't figure it out, that you can do immediately to raise, raise the consciousness of your community. And, uh, and I'm sure you can all feel into that and go, oh, damn, yeah, I've been kind of concentrating on myself for so long I kind of forgot that this is collective so let's um let's get into that expansion because the 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 DNA too as this as these new strands come uh, come online so to speak get activated this highest quality dormant DNA that we have within us that we're activating whether you're going to 12 144 144 thousand bazillion what it's infinite how many dna strands you can activate let's just concentrate on what's happening right here and now can we please but your dna expands and contracts with the level of your consciousness which the, with the vibration of your consciousness so if you've got it's like a slinky you know that that coil toy that walks down the stairs by itself it's like a big coil and like a slinky or a rubber band, when you, when you stretch it out, as you expand your consciousness, your DNA uncoils, you know, very similar to the uncoiling of Kundalini snake and timelines and everything, all interconnected, all the same symbol. Here we go. As it continually expands, it's going to contract every time you, you re-engage the fear levels or you're having a crappy day or you get in judgment or whatever. But the more you expand it, the more you stretch it out, the, the more, just like a slinky or a rubber band, it's unable to contract to the same coiled up tight state. You know, it, it becomes less dense. It's not able to curl up as tightly as it used to. So you want to keep expanding your consciousness as, as often as possible and exercising that, that kind of muscle, that coil, to train it to be open, 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 because that's when you receive the codes. You can't, you know, we're very frustrated with a lot of humanity because their DNA is like coiled up so tightly and they're so stuck in that coiled timeline and that stuck kundalini and all that density uh, that they can't, it's impossible. It's, it, they can't possibly receive the same amount of activations that we do. But us as individual light workers and as, as awakened ones, we want to try to keep that DNA in a calm, relaxed, open state that all is well and we're taking action on expanding the consciousness, expanding the consciousness, not just of ourselves, but of those around us. And it's, it's less able to coil back into that tight structure as we go along. Now, the Venus transit is a very, uh, it's a return of the Divine Feminine, but the, the energy here at Shasta is a very strong feminine energy to begin with. That's, that's how I feel, or at least what is happening right here, because I haven't been here before in this lifetime. So this soft, loving, nurturing vibe is the type that, that melts that tougher-than-nails, masculine, egoic-type structure. Uh, and integration is neutrality. That balance of action in the highest good of all with a nurturing self and nurturing the self back into unity, surrendering to the embrace and embracing all of the human expressions as we make this transition together. This collective support and collaboration are always going to be a higher request, always. If it takes disaster, <sighs> yeah, if it
if it takes disaster. A financial collapse or, or loss of thousands to ignite that dynamic in 51% of the population so that we reach a tipping point, then so be it. But if you're asking or waiting for that to happen or desiring a global disaster to awaken people, perhaps you might just want to consider... <laughs> You might just want to consider a session with me to clear that egoic emotional baggage which manifests wishes of doom upon others because it boomerangs right back at you now and that can be very painful. Not just for you, but for everybody else too. So, uh, <laughs> like I've said before, masks off, Kachina. Are, we, are you dancing in the square now or is Quetzalcoatl about to devour you? This is all about lifting of the veils, and this is not about trying to lift the veils on other people, or I really hope the veils come up on that situation. It's individual first, then it's collective. You've got to get yourself clear. So this Venus transit coming up on June 5th through the 6th makes the return of the Divine Feminine, and this, uh, this Divine Feminine energy that we've been experiencing coming in gets an amplification with this with this uh, with the Venus transit you know Venus very connected to that divine feminine energy and even though the eclipse seemed to amplify that energy this uh, trust me being on Shasta right now that that element of feminine energy is uh, it's just building and building and building. Uh, and that's that... Uh, Mount Shasta being a, a very central node of the crystalline grid and the, the very central node of the activation of that energy, this is probably why Shasta feels so immensely loving and heart-centered and expanding every particle of that beingness, that state of love, right within every every particle of our being, and that's the that rewriting of this encodement. It's a very it's, it feels dreamlike almost up here, very dreamy, kind of loving. Like it, when you surrender to it, you just feel like ah, it's just it, it's bliss, blissy, 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 blissy. And yes, there's integration, because we know that we can't live in a complete state of bliss just yet, if, unless you're completely cared for by, by other people and have um, uh, completely tackled the whole <laughs> physical survival uh, angle, um, which would be beautiful if, if we could all just like lay down and hang out and feel dreamy all day. It would be beautiful. But, um, but it is integration through this. And I also feel this swelling in, in this whole area of Mount Shasta, the expansion of energy underneath the ground itself. It, etherically, it looks like the whole mountain and the surrounding area is lifting like a, like a belly rising with inhalation. You know, there's, a, there's that expansion. No exhale, though, just like, whoosh, just kind of filling up, filling up, filling up, and uh, it's very cool to be here and experience that, and and I sense that that's, that's rising, 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 all the way through Venus transit and, and beyond, so it should be interesting living here this summer. And between the light beings presenting all over the place, you, you literally, if you're, if you're a light worker and your third eye is open, you're, you cannot be anywhere in town <laughs> without uh, running into to something or someone it, that uh, light being wise, either a master or, or a spiritual being or, or ET, the, the master collective, the ET connections. Uh, literally ask them, show me, and they will. You can look up in the sky and say, okay, brothers, show me, and... Well, maybe this is just because I have I have star family. But uh, when I look up in the sky and I say, okay, show me, there is always instantaneous shooting star, flying objects, so, you know, something happens. And that's, <laughs> that's 
amusing to me. It, it just gives me, gives me the giggles. It's very fun to be that connected. And between the, the mountain itself lighting up and amplifying the energetic swells, the love expansion, heart expansion, dreaminess, the synchronistic conversations everywhere. This is a wonderful place to, to be right now. And it, it really, I, I really feel that it, uh, it has very little to do with location. It's not like everyone has to flock to a vortex to feel this. It's, it's collective now. You know, if, if we feel it up here, if the mountain feels it, if it's, if it's being fired through the grid, you're, you're getting it. You cannot, you could, could not be alone if you tried <laughs> right now. It's a, or ever. It's, uh, it's, it's this collective heart expansion, this new, dawn, this light birthing right in the heart center. It's really beautiful. And I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing how how this affects everyone and how this affects how the the new codes and the, the new light that came in last weekend uh, affect the, the kind of busting apart of, of the darker energies because the vibration feels so high right now that every time we make an amplification, the lower stuff always drops off. And you know that, even in your personal life, when you make a, a leap in your awakening, stuff starts to die off, and it, seem, it seems like, whoa, everything's falling apart, you know? And we have to realize that that happens collectively, too. This amplified vibration comes in and gets the, the vibration going a million miles an hour, you know, well, okay, nine million megahertz per hour per second, flying, you know, flying through the grid, you know that something lower is going to drop off. And when it feels this strong and this big and has so much attention and intention placed on it right now, um, you know that something dense is, is about to, uh, is about to fall apart. And that's, and it's wonderful, you know, and we have to accept that in our own lives, whether it be relationship, financial structures, moving, jobs, whatever, friends, family, things just not, just, just kind of falling away. We know that's a regular part of the ascension process by now. And as the frequency of the planet changes and these things get fired through the grid and we, we take another jump like this, we can pretty much expect that something dense is going to drop off and, and break apart and give, a, give us a few challenges on the way through. So we're, we're definitely not out of the woods. I think everybody knows that by now. And as much as everyone loves to talk about uh, what's, what's, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, all, all we can do is, as way showers is say is, is pinpoint specific events when there's going to be a lot of attention and a lot of focus on the planet itself. And that's not just human focus. That's off-world focus that's energetic support for what's going on and anytime a, a way shower is pointing to a, a date or an event and saying here we go here's another amplification you can put your attention into it and tap into it and 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 integrate that in your personal life as best as possible but let's remember that the denser stuff has to break away so it's also a matter of choice as to whether you're allowing, surrendering to the change, let it go, let it go, let the stories of yourself go, let the personality level go, let the egoic density go, go, go. It's not serving anybody but itself at this point. It's not serving anyone on the planet. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. And when things feel like they're being taken away from you, it's be you're, you're creating that reality for a reason because you want it to go and if it takes your if you're if you're surrendering to the higher level and saying okay show me do whatever it takes and they take everything <laughs> as as i had went through last year um it, you've got to surrender to it and go okay all right it's because i'm ready for more it's because i'm ready for something else it is because i stared in the f at the the face of the ring of fire and looked directly 
into the the heart of my of my ancestry of my 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 myself on the other side of that circle i don't know if you're any of you are old enough to remember oh what was the name of that children's show where the the woman held up the mirror that didn't have a mirror in it and she just like looked through the frame and it was for birthdays or something i see jimmy and i see josephine and i see and she'd say all these names of of who she could see it's just it's just like that we're just staring at higher projections of ourselves this t at this time and when you look through that ring of fire mirror at your own higher expression looking you straight in the face and saying yeah you're doing it it's wonderful we're here for you we always have been it's going to be stronger now go 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 stay on it i see you witness verification <laughs> everything you need right there that's exactly what that eclipse brought for me and i i i do hope that it brought magical things for you um and if you were on shasta during that moment uh many blessings it was it was beautiful to share that space with you and if you were meditating or tapping in during the eclipse trying to anchor that that energy i i i wish you a, a deep vow of gratitude from the universe for for taking part and doing your part and let's make sure that in between all of these markers all of these little jumps that we're taking that are a little closer together now that we're speeding up the shift let's make sure that we're integrating that moment to moment hour to hour day to day make sure that we're paying attention now we can't go back to the old stories the old habits the old beliefs any longer let them go. Let's just let them go. And now that I'm here in Shasta, we're back on the weekly schedule. And uh, hopefully I will find my apartment this week. And we will be um, right back into it next Wednesday at 4 o'clock. And until then, please visit my website for little updates and little new things that are happening in Shasta. New services have presented since I've been here. So that's very exciting for me. And until we speak again, have a beautiful and creative week. This has been Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. For more information on Ascension or Ascension Counseling, visit Sandra on the web at www.sandrawalter.com.